If you are planning to do MBBS abroad, this is a video which you should watch. Parents, students, beware because there are a lot of scams which happen and a lot of times you fall victim after few years you realize your degree is invalid. So I'm going to give you all the requirements which you should check before going abroad and if you are planning to move abroad and whether you are choosing the country, the course, the uh, you know, the college, are you doing the right thing? Are you ch uh, checking the right things? Every single detail in this particular video. Also, if you have already made up your mind, still watch this video because there are a lot of things you might learn something new and many times agents will fool you saying that, oh no, this country is too good, the MBBS is cheap. Oh, no worries. I will take care of all the paperwork. See, my student is studying there. He'll show some photographs. Don't fall trap for such things. I will give you all the important things so that after this, you can ask these questions to your agent. Now, why I have to make this video is because NMC, which is our official body, made an official statement. They gave an advisory to the students and parents regarding not just abroad, but also institutes in the uh, country. Lot of parents and students fell victims to unauthorized degrees and scams. And they said that, see, whether you do MBBS in India or abroad, just check these requirements. Minimum 54 months of education in a single institute, 12 months of internship in the same university. Clinical training must not be done in parts in different countries. You should not do like that. Medium of the communication of the language should be in English. It's, the course should be taught in English. The uh, material, whatever you are uh, going to study, should be as per the schedule one of this notice. Like, for example, for NEET exam, you need to study physics, chemistry, biology. So, same way for MBBS, there are certain subjects, some things which you need to know. So, they have given those subjects. Also, that college should be recognized, the degree should be recognized by a proper regulatory body like in india any college mbbs college it should be recognized by nmc if it is not then there is no point it is a waste you're wasting your time money energy everything same way let's say you go to some country maybe nepal or maybe you go to philippines or whatever so that particular college should be recognized by the body within that particular country by some proper government uh, you know regulations okay these are the criteria so please check whether you are studying in india or abroad you need to follow and satisfy all these requirements in case you want to study a continue practice in india if not then maybe the requirements are different because it varies from country to country most of you usually go abroad because you don't want to take a drop you want to save a lot of money and you want to maybe get an international exposure you want to uh, explore places whatever reason and you want to come back and practice in India so 90% of the students usually do that well this is your captain's chase and I'm going to give you all the important details for all the important countries so that you do not fall victim to all these scams and this is my duty as a mentor as a teacher having guided thousands of kids into AIMS, GMC, FMC, JIPMER and so much more it is my duty now to make sure that you guys, as you are passing out from 2025, you know the right set of information and are aware of what questions need to be asked and what requirements need to be fulfilled. So quickly smash the like button for this particular video content. It takes a lot of effort. And also subscribe to the number one Need English channel, which is your Vedantu Need English. Thank you so much for liking the video. So let's proceed. And let's also understand why MBBS abroad is actually lucrative. So, a lot of you have already made the decision, but still, see guys, until now, what used to happen? You had to write the FMG examination. If you want to practice in India, okay, when you study abroad and you want to come back, then you had to give this exam. But if you study in India, there was no exam. But now what has happened? Whether you study abroad or whether you study in India, you have to give that exam, but it is not called FMG, it is called next exam to practice medicine in India or appear for NEET PG. What is this NEET PG? This is post-grad. If you want to do MG, MD or some postgraduate course in medicine, then you need to give the NEET PG exam. So to appear for that, next is mandatory. You have to qualify next. So now you have to anyways give the next exam, whether you study in India or whether you study abroad. 
So you will be like, so sir, what then? Best thing is when you go abroad, if you compare the fees with our private institutes, the fees are very, very low. Like in India, you might spend anywhere between 50 lakhs to 2 crores in some private college. But abroad, the fees are very less, maybe somewhere between 20 lakhs to 50 lakhs. So the budget automatically reduces, you save a lot of money. And many parents don't realize and students also don't realize that, see, you might be like, sir, I have money, sir, I will spend 1 crore in the private college. Many people forget that there is PG also because the value for just MBBS degree is not there. So you have to do PG. Now, again, if you do in India and you don't get a government seat, again, you have to spend 1-2 crores. So do you have money for that? So if you don't, then better study abroad. You save a lot of money and then you can come back and use that money for your further education in PG. By the time you can put that money in fixed deposit or whatever, some investment and that money would have also grown in 4-5 years. So that is a smart move if you don't want to take a drop. All right. So the regulations which have been laid down. So before they were little bit relaxed. Now it is very strict guys. So all these requirements I already mentioned most of them, right, should be followed whether you are studying in India or whether you are studying abroad. Okay, like minimum 54 months, that's almost like four years. Okay, education is required a little bit more than four months and then you have to do clinical training. English is required. You need to give the next exam. All these things are now mandatory. So let's go country by country now. Talking about Russia. MBBS is six years with one year of internship. There is a proper government authority as shown. There is an exam which you need to write which is in Russian in case you want to do PG in Russia. In case you want to do PG in Russia, that is the risk factor. Be aware of it. If you are planning to stay in Russia, you have to give it in Russian. If you want to do PG. But MBBS degree will be taught in English only. Don't worry about it. But there are some colleges which teach in Russian also. You need to also take a look at that. The course, the degree, the college should teach your MBBS degree in English. But the exam for PG will be in Russian. But don't worry, many students come back to India. So when you come back to India, the next exam is in English. So that risk completely goes off if you come back to India. Is this absolutely clear in your head? Okay. The budget is around 25 lakhs, which is not very high. It goes up to 50 lakhs also. If you talk about Georgia, Georgia earlier was not there as an option for many students. But now suddenly it is picking up like crazy. And you know why? See, again, the same NMC rules are followed. There is a proper licensing body. And there is also an exam if you want to do PG in Georgia. Postgraduate course in Georgia. But the best part that exam is in English. So anyways, you will be studying in English and English you are comfortable with. So you don't have to learn any other foreign language, which in Russia you will have to. So the risk is not there in Georgia. And fees wise, little bit expensive than Russia. but it is not that bad also, 35 lakhs and slightly above. Maybe it will go to around 40, 50, 60 lakhs, not more than that. Okay. So that is a small advantage in case you want to continue your foreign journey. Talking about China. Again, 5 plus 1 years following all the regulations laid down by NMC. There is a licensing body. There is an exam which is in Chinese in case you want to continue your journey in China. But if you are only going there to study and come back, don't worry about it. You can just give the next exam in English. Simple. Budget is 25 lakhs, slightly on the levels of Russia. Okay. Clinical exposure is very good. Okay. And in Georgia, it is decent. And obviously, in Russia, it is good if you choose the right college. Okay. It also depends on the city. It is usually said that when you go and study in Russia, Russia is very vast. Don't go to random remote villages. Go to proper cities. Okay. Go to proper towns and cities. Don't go to random villages because they might also offer very cheaply. But that is not what you should look for. There are many more countries like Uzbekistan. Okay. Again, same rules it is following. Best part, no licensing exam. Clinical exposure is good. Budget is also decent. Okay. No exam means you can continue your PG journey in that country. Okay. So, risk is not there. It is now a 
preferred option for many MBBS students. You also have Kazakhstan, you might have heard. Yeah, there is no risk over there. Budget is also decent, 35 lakhs. There is an exam though, if you want to do your PG in case. But the best part, it is in English. So that way risk is not there. Now, a few things that you need to be also aware of is in these countries. Like for example, in Russia, you need to be aware that if you go to the western border, it's like a war zone, yeah, which is bordering Ukraine. But if you are in major cities, it's completely safe and Russia is so vast, guys, it is much bigger than India. I mean, even when the war is happening or was happening, you know, uh, towards Ukraine, most of Russia was not at all affected by it. So, I know some students and parents might have that concern about war and unrest, civil unrest, like some of the uh, um, mid-Asian countries like, you know, Kazakhstan and all of them, they had some political issues. So, those things might pop up from time to time. So, those are the things which you need to be little bit aware of, okay? It's not like, uh, sir, there are wars happening everywhere. Oh my God, people are running. No, that, that Those sort of things are not there. Few places, few border towns, uh, you know, uh, there are some issues. So, please check which place, which city your college is. Check out the news articles from the last one year or so and see if there are any political tensions, wars or any geopolitical issues or so and so forth. Okay, right. Talking about uh, Kyrgyzstan, again, it follows all the NMC guidelines, but there are some risks over there because clinical exposure is moderate. It does not fulfill NMC regulations most of the colleges. So, beware of this country. Okay, I would say avoid this as much as possible, although there are few colleges but you need to be extra, extra careful. Then in Philippines, Philippines, you should be very careful because see the budget is 30 lakhs. Language of exam for PG is in English. There is a licensing body also. Clinical exposure is also good. Many agents will try to tell go to Philippines. It's closed. It's very safe. Yes, it is very safe and all of that. It's very tourist friendly, everything. But the problem is even though it is five years of experience, Please understand, MBBS in Philippines does not fulfill NMC regulations, but students can prepare for USMLE exam and pursue PG from USA. So, if you are going to Philippines, yes, it will be cheap. And if you have the mindset, I want to study PG in US by giving the USMLE exam, then it is a good option. But many criteria are not met by many of the Philippines universities. There are few universities which meet. But there are very few in number. But you know that also you need to be very, very careful. So better to avoid it unless you are sure of doing PG in US or continuing in Philippines only. If you want to continue your doctorate degree over there. In Egypt, well, there are some risks. Well, the exam level is in English. There is a proper licensing body and 5 plus 2 years. Be careful. It's 2 years, 5 plus 2. Okay, it fulfills NMC regulations. Clinical exposure is also there. 40 lakhs and above. Risk one year extra internship as compared to other countries. That is the only drawback in Egypt. Otherwise, Egypt is pretty much fine country. Yes, it is a little bit hot and all of that. But if you are okay with it, you can definitely continue. Talking about MBBS in Nepal. Nepal is a very friendly country with India. Uh, well, MBBS duration is 4.5 years plus one year of internship. Licensing body is there. Exam name is there. It is also an exam, but it is slightly on the higher side. Clinical exposure is good and it fulfills NMC regulations. But still have a look at the colleges, whether it satisfies all the criteria. Few colleges here and there might still try to do few. If you go to Belarus, right. Belarus is also on the border of Russia and, uh, you know, Europe, you will see. So again, five years. And, uh, you know, there is a proper licensing body and there is an exam which is also going to be conducted in English. Exposure is good, 25 lakhs of budget. Risks are not there. But beware that Belarus is stuck between the war of Ukraine and Russia. Right now, it is not participating directly. But in the future, if the war between the countries extends a lot, it might be a trouble. But as of now, there is no such trouble. Okay. So, just warning you, just have a look at it. Just go to the main cities, don't go to villages and border towns. MBBS in Malaysia is also a decent option. 
अगेन देर इज अ प्रॉपर लाइसेंसिंग बॉडी विद अ मेडिकल एग्जाम which is in english budget of 40 lakhs good infrastructure and it follows nmc regulation so malaysia is also very good option not very far from india now i have put up all other uh, options also and how many approx seats are there for indians okay this is for indians so russia around 5500 maximum students go over here only kazakhstan china uh, china bangladesh egypt serbia nepal european union so around 20000 students go abroad for their mbbs degree every year and you know that's a very good option because you save a lot of money you can see the budget also is not very high 25 lakhs to 30 lakhs to 45 lakhs only in europe it is very high 65 lakhs because europe is a much much advanced developed country their currency is also very strong so obviously the cost of living is very very high especially in europe people go to croatia romania poland lithuania latvia and slovakia okay these are the main countries which you should aim for if you are going for european union let me also give you one important stats russia and georgia they constitute almost 50% of indian students who go abroad yes just these two countries one in two students are either going to russia or georgia and many students now has started exploring other countries also so you should also keep those options open it's not like i have to go to russia but after giving all this information at least you have got some clarity but still you know the things are there like sir which college in this country sir uh, how will my visa be arranged sir who will do the paperwork sir uh, is this college going to be good sir what if i want to continue abroad only i don't want to come back to india or i want to come back to india sir uh, what is the loan requirement what amount i need to keep in bank what is the cost of living so many things are there guys it is not so simple because if you are in india then it's simple like you just visit whatever city you go study there take a pg or take a hostel or you stay in the college only and then you come back it's simple cost of living everything you know in india but when it is abroad it is not so easy the paperwork is crazy and if you make one mistake in the document your visa your application everything gets rejected or sometimes you might be just stuck in that country so if you need help you want to talk about you know uh, your desires or your uh, requirements then we have kept a form in the description box so that you can get in touch with our partner you know pa uh, partner agents you can say who are tied up with all these countries and the universities who will help you guide you right from choosing the college to filling the form to the visa application to make sure that you reach safely and everything goes on smoothly so we have kept the application form in the description box so our partner companies will be helping you with the counseling process the form looks something like this so as you open the description box and you see that particular form it will look something like this so enter your number over here continue and fill up the form so that we can get in touch with you okay regarding the counseling process but and if you have still more doubts please put up those doubts in the comment section whatever sir i want information on this country sir i want information about this thing please put it up in the comments we'll definitely make the next video thank you so much i hope you found this video useful make sure you smash the like button and subscribe thank you so much for liking guys